So in this tutorial video uh, on lab exercise two, the metric system and data analysis, we're going to look at quantities and units for those quantities. And the objectives for the lab uh, here are going to be to compare the customary and metric system of measurement. And then uh, the second objective is going to be to identify common quantities used in biology, as well as their units. And then to perform unit conversions using what's called the factor label method. Okay, so uh, you may have seen it before um, in uh, one of your earlier science classes. So uh, there are different units of measurement, um, and there's some common ones. One of the, the ones that's most widespread and used by uh, just about every country except the United States uh, has been adopted by them is called the metric system. Uh, and and then we have the one we use here in the United States called the customary system. It's also called the imperial system. And a difference here might be, let's say you go and you buy gasoline in Canada or Mexico, you would be pouring that gasoline in liters. Whereas here we use gallons. Gallons is a customary unit and a metric system. Liters is the unit for volume. The, the uh, version of the metric system or the system used by science is adopted by scientists uh, is called the SI system. It's based on the metric system. Uh, and this SI system uh, uh, has standard uh, quantities or standard units that we use to measure different quantities. Uh, and um, it's the one used by science, uh, scientists uh, and engineers worldwide. But the, the engineers here in the United States still use a uh, customary system. Uh, for doing this, which there's a very interesting little side note there in your lab mania. If you read the background, I hope you do. Dealing with NASA and a confusion between engineers and the scientists at NASA. The engineers designed uh, the uh, satellite uh, at, I think it was Boeing or one of those the, those those, those uh, engineering companies that build uh, companies that build planes and things like that. And they gave the designs to the NASA scientists, and NASA scientists were using the SI or metric system. Uh, it turned into a multi-hundred million dollar fiasco, but read about it. It's uh, what happens when you don't pay attention to the units that you're using. Now, the beauty of the metric system is that all the units can be built up to larger units or broken down uh, by factors of 10. And that's nice because when you're using factors of 10, when you're multiplying, you move the decimal to the right every every factor of 10, or you move it to the left anytime you make smaller by dividing by 10. By comparison, if we do something like the uh, length or distance in the customary system, and we're talking about, say, mile, a mile is a, is a, a unit of measurement, and a mile... Uh, has so many feet in there, and, and uh, not very many people might have that number memorized, but one mile is equivalent to 5,280 feet. Now, how many yards is that? Well, every yard is three feet, so uh, you can see here that these are not, they're not related to each other by factors of 10. They're just odd numbers, uh, so a yard is three feet. And then if we talk about a foot, one foot is 12 inches, there's like no rhyme or reason to what's related to what. But if we look at a similar unit in the metric system for long distances, we might use a unit called a kilometer. And the kilometer is equivalent to 1,000 meters. And 1,000 is three factors of 10 or three orders of magnitude, they call it. So an order of magnitude is a level of 10. If you have two orders of magnitude, that's 10 times 10. That's uh, 100, uh, and so on. And so you can see that there's this nice relationship there. Uh, the, any, the, the, the bigger and smaller units, like the smaller unit is feet here, is not related by factors of 10, but in the metric system, the units go by factors of 10, and that's very convenient. So that's one benefit of using the metric system. So uh, when we look at uh, biology, biology is a science. We measure things in, in, in our sciences, and uh, measurement is very important. And so we want to distinguish the use of the term quantity. Quantity can be used in two different ways. It can be used how much, the actual number or value that you've measured. Uh, but it also can be used in, uh, in a way in which we are talking about what 
what are you measuring? Are you measuring length? Are you measuring mass? Are you measuring temperature? And that's the way I'm going to use the word quantity here. Uh, and it's consistent with uh, the physical sciences like physics. We talk about quantities in physics. So uh, in biology, there are some common quantities that are used and then the uh, common units that are used to measure the quantity. So the way you want to think about this is when I talk about quantities, I'm asking, what are you measuring? If you got up and you went and you ran a, a 10 k, which is 6.2 miles. So you went and you ran a 10 k, uh, and all you said was, hey, you know, I, I ran a 10 k. Well, what quantity did you, what quantity are you talking about? The name of the quantity is distance or length. Uh, so that's the difference. So, how did you measure the length of that distance? You you measured it with units. So units would be how you measured and the quantity is what you're measuring. So that's one way to think about it. It's easy to remember the difference between the two. So this is the way your lab manual presents it right here. I just went in and cut out the text from there and put it here. Uh, here they're giving the unit first and then they're giving the name of the quantity. So I'm going to go opposite of that. So I'm going to say the quantity for length. Uh, and lengths can be, uh, there can be specific lengths, like heights or distance. Uh, those are all uh, types of lengths, right? So the basic unit in the metric system for length is the meter. And the meter has an abbreviation of M. Uh, and then for volume. Volume, uh, like gallons in the customary system, volume, the typical unit used is the liter. And the abbreviation is an L. And then mass. And there's a difference between mass and weight. And I think a lot of times the authors in biology confuse these things. But to a physical scientist like physics and chemistry, you got to be careful because there's a very specific difference. Weight is a force due to gravity. Mass is how much stuff you have packed in there. And there is a difference. And just to highlight how the difference is, if you flew from here to the moon... Uh, on an Apollo mission back in the day when we were flying out to the moon. And let's say your body didn't change very much of what was in it. Okay, you might have gone to the restroom or whatever, but more for the most part, uh, your arms are the same. Everything else is the same. That the mass of your body does not change. The amount of stuff in there, the amount of matter. Matter is mass. Mass is a quantity related to how much ma uh, matter you have there. That matter is the same. So when you go to the moon... Your mass stays the same, but your weight is different because the moon is a smaller body and it has less gravitational force. So you're going to weigh less over there, which is why we see old videos. You see the astronauts bouncing around because their muscles are used to having to walk around here on Earth. So they're super strong over there and they, they can jump uh, very, very high uh, over there. So there's a difference, right? So when your biology lab manual refers to weight in on occasion, they're actually talking about mass. Now, when you stay on the surface of the earth, weight, uh, and you're at sea level, weight is roughly uh, directly related to the mass. So uh, in some cases, they'll use it interchangeably, but there's a difference technically. Now, the basic unit for mass in the metric system is the kilo. Let me rewrite that. The kilogram. And uh, that is abbreviated as kg. And then the temperature is another one. For example, you have a body temperature. And uh, the unit uh, typically used in biology is the degree Celsius. This is how you spell it. Or centigrade, sometimes they call it. And uh, you would write it as with a little uh, zero symbol or degree as a superscript and then a capital C. Uh, and so... That's those are the basic quantities and use. Make sure you learn them uh, because I'm going to ask you about them on quizzes and on your exams. What is the quantity? What are the basic units? Now, um, in uh, physics and chemistry, they might use absolute temperature scale, which is Kelvin. It's based on Celsius, but it involves a slight calculation there. So uh, those are the basic units. Now for metric prefixes, uh, if you want it to change miles to feet, it's going to be a lot harder than changing kilometers to meters. Because, and what we're going to do in, in that is use these metric prefixes. The metric prefixes are going to be a prefix that you put in front of the basic unit that can make the unit larger or smaller. And uh, one thing, one way to help you remember this is to remember what happened to King Henry. Okay. King Henry... died 
by drinking chocolate milk. I don't know how you die by uh, drinking chocolate milk. Maybe you uh, went down the wrong pipe. It went down your trachea to your lungs and you drowned. I don't know. But if you look at these first letters here, they help you remember the order of those prefixes. Now, you're going to have to put a little work in there to remember the, the units. So we're going to write them and we're going to list them from top to bottom. I'm going to start here in the middle of the screen. K, K for king stands for kilo. I'm going to put a little dash means we put it in front of the base unit. Like if I put it in front of meter, k kilo meter kilometer. Okay. The H for Henry stands for hecta, and the D diet stands for deca. And then by this one is the base unit. This would be the unit by itself without the prefix. Okay. And so we're just gonna put. That in print. It's not an actual prefix. This was just the, you're getting to, and by the way, we're going smaller as we go down this list. If you go the other way, you're going to bigger units. Okay, so kilo is bigger than hecta and then deca. Uh, after this, we're going to have deci as your prefix, and then the centi, which you probably heard, but centimeters, uh, and uh, that's with an i. By the way, there's a relationship between centi and cents, like a penny and a dollar. And then milli. Okay, and then there's abbreviations for these. For kilo, it's a K. And then you put that in front of the abbreviation for the unit. Like meter, you'll put an M in there, and that would be a kilometer, kilogram. The base unit is the gram. Uh, H for hecta. Deca would be D A. Uh, there is no prefix here. This is the base unit by itself. Deci is just going to be a D. Centi is a C, and milli is an M. Okay, so now you, I'm going to be asking you to remember what these prefixes mean. When you attach them in front, they change the magnitude of that unit. Okay, Kilo is going to stand for 1,000, and we're going to represent this also in... Uh, um, in in a notation that uses uh, exponential form with the base of 10, right? That's used in scientific notation. So uh, how do you get 1,000 with factors of 10? You're going to take 10, you multiply it by 10, and that gives you 100, and you multiply it by 10 again, and that gives you 1,000. So that would be 10 to the third power, okay? Now, all you have to do is, remember King Henry died by chocolate, drinking chocolate milk? Start with 1,000, and then just remove uh, move the decimal once to the left there's a, a decimal center to be to the right and if we do that we're going to get 100 so as we go down this is we're getting smaller it's like we're dividing the the uh, value of that prefix by a factor of 10 so we divide kilo by 10 we get uh, which is a thousand we get 100 and that is 10 times 10 so that's 10 to the second power and now we get 10 so deca like a decade means 10 10 years right so 10 and that would be 10 to the 1. And now notice the pattern here with the exponent. 10 to the 3, 10 to the 2, 10 to the 1. Oftentimes in a face-to-face uh, -face class, I ask students, what comes next? Following the pattern, aren't we taking away 1 from each one? So this would be 10 to the 0 power, which is kind of strange. And by the way, we're at the base. And if we're following this pattern here, that's 1. Guys, in math, any base raised to the zero power is equal to one. A thousand to the zero power is one. Ten to the zero power is one. So here is just one. It's just the base unit by itself, like the meter or the ground. Now we're going to continue this pattern here. If we continue to move the decimal once to the left, we're going to get a point one. Now I'm going to tell you this right now. Anytime you have a small number, and there are these little blue boxes that give you this enrichment to improve even further than just the basic things covered by there. Uh, it has hints for using the metric system. And down here, number eight, read through the rest of them on your own. Okay. But here it says, use a zero before the decimal point when the number is less than one. And actually, what they're really meaning to say is when the number is between, okay, uh, negative 1, the, this interval, and 1. 
Okay, so so you, in other words, anytime it's a small value, less than the absolute value of one. Uh, so it would be like 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.8. Uh, yeah, on the negative side, if you get to zero, then it would be like negative 0.1, negative 0.2. Those are all small values. Anytime you do that, you're going to put a, a zero in front of it. And this is so that you know that that little point there is intentional. So Anytime you have a small value, like if your value is 0.432, don't just write it like that. Put a zero. And when you're typing with a word processor, put a zero in front of that too. It's proper. Okay. Now, following this pattern here, 3, 2, 1, 0, this would be 10 to the negative 1. Okay. And then I'm just going to finish off this pattern here. Centi is 1 hundredth of the value. By the way, 0.1 is 1 tenth. Uh, taking that value and breaking it up to 10 equal parts. This is 100 equal parts, and that would be 10 to the negative 2. And then tenths, hundredths, thousandths place, and that would be 10 to the negative 3. Okay? Um, these can also be written like this. 10 to the negative 1 is the same as 1 over 10 to the 1. 1 tenth. 1 tenth, 1 tenth. This is also can be written as 1 over 10 to the 2, which is 1 over 100, which is 1 hundredth. And this is also equivalent to 1 over 10 to the 3. So all of these mean the same thing, and they would mean milli and so on. So remember, King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. And we can actually go higher and smaller. I'm going to take the time to cover that. Now notice that as we went down this way, we were decreasing by factors of 10. Like we were dividing by 10, getting smaller. When you go the other way, you're getting bigger by factors of 10. That's true for King Henry, what happened to him. But once you get outside of King Henry, and that means I go above kilo or below milli, we jump by three orders of magnitude. In other words, a thousand times. Okay? You probably heard of megabytes when it comes to storing data. That's a capital M. Okay? Not a little m, that's milli. Okay. And I'm not going to write out the full numbers here, 1,000. Instead, I'm going to just stick with the uh, exponent notation. That would be 10 to the 6. 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. 6 uh, tens, that's a million. Okay. And then there is giga, like gigabytes of memory. And then you got tera after that. Okay. So I'm just going to go up to giga. That's a capital G. And that would be another three orders of magnitude. So that's 10 to the 9. So remember, when you're talking about King Henry dying by drinking chocolate milk, it's just going by one order of magnitude, by a factor of 10. But once you go outside of what happened to King Henry, then it's factor three factors of 10, three orders of magnitude. When you go down this way, for Millie, you've probably heard of uh, perhaps nano, but there's one before that. This would be micro, and the Greek letter is mu. And when you're using the microscope, you might measure in micrometers. Uh, and that's going to be 10 to the negative 6. We jump three orders of magnitude smaller. That's uh, that unit broken up 1 million times. So that's 1 millionth. And then you have nano. There's one more after that that uh, you uh, may hear from time to time. Uh, and that's going even smaller, a thousand times smaller than this. And that would be pico like a picometer. Now you're talking about atom size. Uh, and this would be 10 to the negative 9. So whenever you talk about nanotechnology, they're talking about manipulating uh, matter in ways that benefit us at the atomic level, at the molecular level. Okay, so those are your metric prefixes. So uh, make sure you learn them by memory because you're not going to be given this table uh, during tests. So you've got to know them. Okay, so the way you know them is interact with them, use them. Uh, and uh, the little trick, King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk might help you. Remember, start with kilo, go down, make your list, and then you have started at 1,000 and then go by a factor of 10 lower going down there. So oftentimes when dealing with uh, uh, measurements, quantities, uh, whether it's length or mass or volumes of things, uh, you have to convert them from one unit to another for one re uh, for whatever reason. Maybe you need to express it in larger units or smaller units. And 
Uh, the way to do that in a more formal way, in a way which will help prevent uh, making mistakes, is called the factor label method. Uh, it's very important not to make mistakes when it comes to uh, these unit conversions because a lot of times these measurements uh, uh, are for things that uh, can mean the difference between whether an accident happens or not. If this is uh, uh, it may be uh, engineering or designing things. If you are uh, administering medications, you need to convert to different units. You don't want to over-medicate, possibly killing somebody. Uh, well, that's, this is very important. So uh, I always like to go to food sometimes, for example, because uh, I, I like food. And, and here we have um, a pizza. So I'm going to use pizza as an example. And here's a typical entire pizza that's been cut once, and that makes two parts, and you cut it again. And so that makes four parts, and then you go and you cut again and again, and you're going to get eight pieces. So what we see here is that one pizza is equal to eight slices. And what I've just given here are equivalent values. So these are the equivalents. One pizza is equal to 10 slices. Kind of like a kilometer is equal to... 1,000 meters, or one mile is equal to 5,280 feet. These are the same, it's the same quantity, the same amount, just in different units, larger or smaller units, right? So uh, with that in mind, we're going to use pizza as an example to show how you would formally convert from one unit to another. And so you're always going to follow this, what we call this factor label method, and, and that means you're, you're, you're not just showing work because you'll lose credit on a test. You're showing yourself work so that you don't make a mistake in setting up the calculation that needs to be done. And so you're going to follow this pattern here. You're always going to start with your original. So your original value. And then you're going to multiply it by a conversion factor. And that conversion factor comes from the equivalents, like the equivalents one pizza equals to eight slices. And what that's going to do is now it's going to give you your quantity with the new units or your desired units. Keep in mind that it's the same value, the same uh, quantity, just in different units. So following this here, I have an example here. And I ask this question, how many pizzas are equal to 30 slices? Okay. So in this problem here, we're starting with 30 slices. That's your original value. Uh, another way of writing this might say in, uh, convert 30 slices of pizza to an equivalent amount in number of pizzas, or just simply saying, hey, what I want you to do is I want you to convert 30 slices, and I want you to convert that to uh, pizzas. Okay? And our units here are slices and pizzas. Uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to write down, you always start by writing down your original value with the units, and then what comes next is a multiplication sign. Now, sometimes it's helpful at this point to put your original value over 1, uh, just so that we know uh, where the slices are uh, in this relationship here. Uh, you remember that, recall that any number over 1 is equal to that number, right? So 10 over 1 is 10. A million over one is a million. 30 slices over one is like saying divided by one is the same as 30 slices. So what this does is it helps us visualize because your conversion factor is going to look like a ratio or a fraction. And what you have to do is you have to set up the values that come from the equivalents here in a way that when you multiply, you cancel out the original units and you get the new units. And in order to cancel, remember... If we go back to algebra and factors, right? Those are, when we're dealing with x's and y's and you have that same factor above and below the line, those factors cancel out. And uh, that's the same thing. You're going to treat these units as if they were factors in your math class. So if slices is on top here, then you're going to write slices on the bottom. And then on the other side, you put the units that you desire. And in this case, we want pizza for that. Now, you want to notice here that in the way I'm modeling this procedure for you, this technique, I didn't write any numbers yet. The issue and the mistakes happen when we very, very quickly just go ahead and write numbers in real quick, and you end up multiplying when you should have divided or vice versa because you set up the problem incorrectly. You set it up wrong because you went in through the numbers in first. 
when you put these units down here first, that guides you as to what numbers go where. Here we have the one has to go with pizza in this relationship, so one goes on top here. Not going to go on the bottom. The one doesn't always go on the bottom. It goes where the equivalents tell you they should go. And eight has to go with slices. So we put eight right here. Remember that your units cancel out, and that gives you, right now, the setup is correct because dimensionally the units or the dimensions are correct. So now all you need to do is take your calculator. You remember it's top times top, so if we multiply the top times the top, you're going to get 30 on top, and it's pizza because that's the units. And on the bottom, you get 1 times 8. You get 8 on the bottom, so you're going to end up with 30 over 8, which means 30 divided by and when you have to do these calculations on quizzes and tests, I'll have the, the lockdown browser will have a calculator for you to use. You're not going to be able to use your phone or a handheld calculator. None of that is going to be allowed. There'll be the calculator there for you. Uh, but for now, as you're studying, you can use uh, your calculator. And so when you do that, 3 divided by 8 is going to give 3.75. And you always report your number with decimals. We're not going to use fractions here in science. Uh, there are some rounding rules that are covered in the lab manual, which is something you should enrich and go and review if you or look over for the first time if your science teachers back in high school never covered that with you. Um, if I have time, I'll provide a tutorial for it. I won't really grade against you not rounding correctly, but there is a proper way to do it. And if you're a science major, you really, really need to, to learn uh, where to round uh, for significant figures. So what does this mean? 30 slices is equivalent to three of these pizzas and about three quarters. Uh, so we were to look at the entire pizza there, three of those plus the 0 0.75, because this part has already been eaten. Somebody already took those slices, okay? Uh, so that's what that is. So this is the factory label method. I want to point out that when you look in your lab manual, the lab manual assumes, uh, in my thinking, the authors assume that you already know how to do this technique. You can see I cut this right out of your lab manual, and they give that setup. They're converting 62 centimeters to 620 millimeters, and here's your conversion factor, and those are the units that cancel out. You can see your conversion factor right there. Uh, the lab manual doesn't go into explaining how to do this. This is a, a, perhaps the author who wrote the book assumes that this skill has already been done. So you do have some uh, examples to do, uh, and uh, they're there on your paper. And I have a few that I'm going to go over here in a little bit of example uh, problems for you, and then you have some to practice there on the assignment uh, document. So. Um, the um, lab manual gives you, we were talking about customary uh, uh, units earlier, the lab manual gives you a list of these customary equivalents to the metric system. So those are on the left is the customary and on the right is the metric. The beauty of the metric system is all you have to do is remember the prefixes and you can convert from larger to smaller all over the place, but the customary system has these crazy conversions. Look at this, one inch is 2.5 centimeters. So uh, customary to metric, are here. And so if you don't know these, these would be things you have to look up. Now, when it comes to, uh, say, um, the metric system, all you have to do is know the prefixes and you can do the conversion. That's the beauty of the metric system, the second beauty of it, besides its factors of 10, right? So uh, anytime you have, say, I gotta, go, I gotta take gallons and change it to milliliters, you're gonna have to go to it and look up things if you don't know them. But in the metric system, we don't. So I have here these, uh, uh, three examples, and then on uh, the uh, lab for this week, I have three, uh, I think, problems that you can use to practice doing the conversions yourself. You're going to have to do them uh, on quiz and test time. So this one here is taking inches and converting to centimeters. This is a customary to metric. This means we have to go look it up if we don't know it off the top of our heads. I know them because I've used this conversion uh, for years, but unless you do, you have to go look it up. This one, we recognize the unit's liters. Uh, so here, we don't have to look it up because we know the prefixes. Remember, King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk, right? Uh, here, we have grams, centigrams to decigrams. Uh, that's metric, so we uh, uh, can uh, 
use our knowledge of the prefixes to do that. So here we're going to need to know what are the equivalents for inches to centimeters. So I'm going to go back over here. And that's this one here. One inch is equal to 2.5 centimeters. Okay. And I'm going to start with the original value, 68 inches. Okay. The abbreviation for inches is IN. And if you want to, you can put that over one to remind yourself that the inch is on the top. Now, remember, when you're going to set these up, don't put any numbers yet. Just put the units down. You know you need to cancel inches, so the inches goes on the bottom. We're going to centimeters, so centimeters goes on the top. Now, when we go back over here, the 1 goes with the inch, and the 2.5 goes with the centimeter. 1 goes with the inch. That means 1 goes on the bottom. I like when 1's on the bottom because we don't have to actually divide. And the 2.5 on the top. Okay, so cancel your units, and this will give you centimeters here. Okay, remember, this is a customary to... Um, um, metric or metric to customer, you have to look those up. So I'm going to look at my calculator here. And 68, or you have to do it the, the old-fashioned way with paper and pencil. And I get 170 centimeters. Okay. Now, looking at the prefixes, we got to remember that King Henry, remember King Henry uh, died... Uh, by the base drinking chocolate milk, okay? I see the little m prefix, so we're dealing with this one, and l is the base, okay? So we're going to go ahead and write this down, the original quantity, milliliters. If you want to, you can put it over one, put a multiplication sign, okay? Draw the next line here, and you know milliliters has to go on the bottom, this becomes second nature. We're trying to go to liters, so we put the liters on the top. And now we're like, okay, where are the equivalents? I'm not going to give them to you. We were expected to know the prefixes, right? So here is your strategy. Where the prefix is, make sure you remember this. So where the metric prefix is, you're going to place the one there. And then on the other, on the other side of the line, is where you're going to place the value for that prefix. So on the other side of the line, place uh, on the other side of the line, place the value for the prefix. Remember, I told you how to remember this, right? For if you're barely, if you've never been uh, expected to know them and always look them up, I'm expecting my, my students to know them uh, and start learning them. Um, remember, King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk. We made our list here. Remember, this starts with 1,000, right? So this is 1,000, 100, 10, 1, 0 0.1, 0 .0, 0 0.01, and then 0 0.001. So... You can do that on the margin, right, when you're doing this work. And so what a value do I need? I'm going to need this one. I'm going to need the one that uh, is with a milli because the milli is the one that's relevant. Now, so now remember, where are we supposed to put the one? We're going to put the one where the prefix is. So we're going to put the one here and then where the uh, the uh, on the other side where the base unit is, that's where you're going to put your value. Okay. So that would be 0 0.001. Now, students will do uh, their do it their own way and intuitively come up with it differently. But if you follow this one, if you know those prefixes that I want you to learn and their values, 1,000 to 1,000th 1, on that list, you'll never make a mistake. You'll never make the wrong guess. Okay, This, this strategy works all the time. Uh, so remember the one with the prefix and on the other side, what the value of the prefix. The prefix means milli, means 0 0.001, which is 1,000. So milli means 1,000. So one millimeter is like saying one thousandth of a liter. That's one thousandth of a liter. They're equivalent, just like one pizza is equal to eight slices. Cancel your units. And the beauty of working with the metric system is its factors of 10. 
150 times 0 0.0001, that's going to give you 0 0.150 liters. So 150 milliliters is less than a liter. Okay. Now, if we remember the strategy here, we got issues because both have the prefix. Remember the strategy was find the prefix, put a one there. Okay. So what are we going to do here? Whenever both of your metric uh, units that you're converting to both have prefixes, you're going to go to the base. So you're going to do an extra step. Okay. Go to the base unit, and then from there, go to the desired unit. Okay. That's the strategy. And it's because you cannot use this strategy of finding the prefix if both have the prefix. Okay. But if we go and use one conversion factor here, to go with two grams, we can do that because that's like one of these problems here. And then we use another conversion factor to take that answer and go to decigrams, uh, the new unit. We, we're still using this strategy. We're just breaking it into steps. Okay, so so remember, you do that anytime both units have the prefix, you, uh, 32 uh, centigrams. You write your original value. We know both have the prefix, so we're going to go to the base unit first. So this strategy has to be remembered if you if they ever both have units. So I'm going to set this up. I'm going to put centigrams has to go on the bottom because remember this is understood to be over one. And we're going to go to grams. The problem doesn't tell you to do that. That's our strategy. Okay. And remember now we can use this strategy from up here. Where's the prefix? The prefix is not on the top. It's down on the bottom. Centi is on the bottom. And what does the prefix mean? The prefix means 0 0.01. Now, you can do this at, and get your answer. And if you do, you're going to get your answer in grams. But now you're going to get that answer, and you're going to multiply by the next conversion factor, so you might as well do it all at once. So we're going to go ahead and establish our second conversion factor. We've already canceled out centigrams. So we're going to put... Uh, if grams is on the top here, we're going to put it on the bottom, and we're trying to go to decigrams. Okay. Now, following the strategy, the initial strategy up here, the, where is the prefix? The prefix is on the top now. Okay. And deci means 0 0.1. And the grams cancel. And that leaves us with decigrams. Now, remember... It's the top times the top times the top, and you're going to get an answer on the top, and then the bottom times the bottom times the bottom, you get an answer on the bottom. Or just go top times top times top, and then divide by anything you have to that's on the bottom. Okay, so you don't really have to divide by ones. You can ignore those, but we are going to have to divide by 0.1. Okay, so 32 times 0 0.01. Uh, you can just punch that in your calculator. It's really going to be moving the decimal back and forth one way and then the other. Uh, I can do the ask my head, but um, so you can use your calculator, right? And on exams, you're not going to use a calculator. You're going to have access to a calculator on the lockdown browser. You can click there. The calculator pops up on you, and then you use the calculator there. So no devices are allowed during tests and quizzes. Keep that in mind. So 32 times 0 0.01, which would move the decimal place twice, you would get 0 0.32 on that. And then when you would divide by a small number, it actually moves the decimal back the other way. So we're going to end up moving the decimal back one time to the right, and that gives me an answer of 3.2. So 32 centigrams is the same as 3.2 decigrams. So uh, there are some practice uh, conversions, but you want to make sure that you also go back and you learn your prefixes, learn the quantities and the units, and then practice doing the factor label method. So this is a tutorial on some of that basic math that scientists use. So I hope you find this helpful. Let me know if you have any questions when you try those practice problems for the lab. I'll be happy to help you out.